Hello everyone, welcome back to Storytime. Scott here. Today we're reading Oni, the Mail Pouch Pooch. Let's get started. In the year 1888, on a cold, rainy October night in Albany, New York, a scraggly terrier mutt wandered through the empty streets looking for a place to get out of the rain. He was so skinny, his ribs stuck out. At the post office, the back door was opened a crack, and the dog squeezed inside. The room was warm and dry. He came to a pile of canvas bags. He sniffed around until he found just the right spot, where he circled twice, curled up, and went to sleep. The next morning, workers found the mud on the mail pouches. He gave a mean, low-pitched rumble. The men talked to the dog and asked him his name. The mutt glared. He sniffed, but he didn't bite. He seemed to like the smell of their blue wool uniforms. Days passed. The dog didn't leave, and no one came looking for him, so the men cleaned him up and gave him a name. They called him Oni. Oni settled in at the Albany post office. He patrolled the mail room, nosing out trouble. Rats and cats didn't stand a chance. He supervised the men as they sorted and bagged letters. Different men took Oni home, thinking that he might want a family. But Oni wasn't interested. Each time, he made his way back to the post office and to his mail pouches. In the afternoons, when the men loaded the outgoing mail on the wagon, Oni stood guard. Then he hopped aboard for the ride to the train depot. With his ears up and his nose to the wind, he was alert to any danger. Once the men returned to the post office with the incoming mail, they discovered they were missing a mail pouch. What's more, Oni was missing too. One man headed back to the train depot. He found the missing mail pouch. Oni was sitting on top of it. But when the man tried to get the bag, Oni growled. He showed his teeth and refused to give it up. The worker was out of uniform, and Oni was not about to turn over government property to just anybody. The man raced back to the office, where he grabbed a canvas bag and located a friend in uniform. Together, they went back to the depot and found Oni, still guarding the U.S. mail. The men walked slowly up to Oni. He sniffed the bag. He sniffed the legs of the blue wool uniform. He lowered his ears wagged his tail, and hopped off the pouch. After that, his pals bought him an official-looking collar with a tag that read, Oni, Post Office, Albany, New York. A few weeks later, at the depot, as the train started pulling away, Oni chased after it. Running lickety-split, he leaped and landed in the mail car. The Albany men were sad. The train crew waved their hats. They were glad to have Oni aboard. All the way to New York City, Oni sat in the open doorway, seeing new sights and sniffing new smells. The Albany postman looked for Oni on the next train from New York, and the next, and the train after that. Days and weeks went by, but Oni didn't return. Several months later, the Albany postmen were at the train depot when, lo and behold, Oni jumped off the mail train. His friends asked him where he had been, but Oni just wagged his tail. After that, the men tied a note to his collar. Dear Railway Postman, Oni guards the U.S. mail. Will you let us know where he has been? Please attach your depot tag to his collar. It wasn't long before Oni hopped another train. The next time Oni showed up in Albany, he had so many tags hanging from his collar that he could barely lift his head. The postal employees tried to remove some to make his load a little lighter, but Oni didn't like that. He growled. So his pals bought a harness that stretched across his back and around his chest. They spread his silver and brass medals all over his body instead of under his neck. This made it easier for Oni to walk. He liked it just five. Oni took off again, crisscrossing the country on the mail trains. He visited New York City, 
Brooklyn, Boston, and Augusta, Maine. He saw Cleveland, Cincinnati, and Fort Wayne. He traveled to Chicago, St. Paul, Duluth, the Dakota Territory, Seattle, San Francisco, and Los Angeles. In Texas, he inspected Fort Worth, Waco, San Antonio, Houston, and Galveston. He hopped a train to Denver, Kansas City, Omaha, Memphis, New Orleans, Key West, Washington, D.C., and Baltimore, and only stopped at all the small towns in between. Some say he even inspected the trains and depots in Alaska, Canada, and Mexico. This is a map of the present-day mainland United States for easy reference. In Oni's day, some of the states were still territories. And that about does it for another month of story time here at the Colorado Railroad Museum. Join us again next month for part two of Oni, the Mail Pouch Pooch. Now, let's pop on over to Ronnie for an amazing craft. Hi, everyone. This is Ronnie here from the Colorado Railroad Museum. I'm so glad to see you and anxious to talk to you about our book, Oni, the Mail Pouch Pooch. And we're doing this as part one. So the craft that we're doing today has to do with how um, Oni was traveling and that was on the RPO, or Railroad Post Office. So let's get started. We need glue, scissors, a marker, a tissue box with the inside all cut out, tissue paper and construction paper. And finally, we need a little picture of Oni. And if you don't have a picture of Oni, you can download the image from the link on the description. Let's get started. So here's your tissue box. And all we're really gonna do is that we're going to wrap it like a present. So we're going to open it, tissue paper. The tissue paper wants to get open. And we're gonna turn it upside down. And probably we're gonna do it closest to the end and then cut the excess off now. But you're just kind of measuring it. I'm just going to cut a little bit off of the spies. It's just easier to wrap a present or wrap an RPO car. <laughs> you don't have too much to have to be, get tucked in there. Okay. All right. This tissue paper probably just a little bit longer than what I've used in the past, but that's okay. This to one, go ahead and just fold it in and do a slow fit. Perfect. Keep it again. Now on the sides, you might have you need a little bit of help having someone kind of show you how the wrap presents. Or maybe you've already been doing that for a while. So then you just kind of get this side. Put it up a little bit. And tape it. And I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. We would just do the same thing on the other side. Warm and peeped up for the menu of warranty. Make that flat. All those little funny things, just tuck them in there. <laughs> okay. No. Keep it. And now you have your whole RPO covered. 
Now you're going to make a little slit down the middle. And I'll cut the side here. Because we're going to tuck it in and tape it down. But there's a little bit of I don't like the idea that we're just gonna tape up here so it doesn't come, pop out. And then if you want to put a little bit more on this side, it wouldn't be the worst idea. Make sure it's all nice and tight. Okay. So now you have your RPO and it's already completely wrapped up. Next thing you need to do is you need to put the doors in for the RPO. So then you're going to take your construction paper and I just make up, you know, fairly, maybe about an inch, an inch and a half. I'm just going to slip, make it yeah. all the way down. Then you're probably going to need for each side, but right now I'm just going to do one side. I'm going to make a big door. I'm going to make a smaller rectangular door. And then and we can make some windows. Maybe I'll just use that and we can make it that way. Okay. So, go ahead and take your RPO, lay it flat, and we're going to put the little door here first. And I always think it's easier to go ahead and put the glue on the box. If you put it on the paper, it gets stuck on your fingers and you can't get it off. The fun door. And there's the bigger door. And I'm going to do a window right across here. Every car or every RPO has its own number. Ours here at the Railroad Museum, even though it's a green RPO, we could still put a number on ours and maybe I'll go ahead and put our same number. And that one is B and S 254. And then down here, we're gonna put United Tates Mail Rail the way. Oh my goodness. You make post office kind of small, but it'll still be on there. Post office. You're probably going to need some help from someone in your family to do it. Or if you're a really good writer, you can do it yourself. So this is what it's going to look like on an RPO. It's going to be on both sides. So when you have time, go ahead and do the exact same thing on the other side. And so that way everybody knows what car it is, regardless of what side they're looking at. And finally, the last thing we need to do is add our owner. And he used to like to sit on the mail so, I have a little picture of him sitting on some mail. 
and there's our call our RPO with Oni sitting in the back going on his travels. Finally, at the very end, the reason why we want to use a tissue box is because it is going to be something that you can hold your mail in it after mom and dad go get it. Right here. And that way it can sit there and wait for whoever needs to, to look at it, pay the bills or whatever you need. Um, once again, thank you for joining me here at the Colorado Railroad Museum. We look forward to seeing you next month so that we can hear part two of Oni the Mail Pouch Pooch. Thanks. Bye. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Be sure to visit our online gift shop for a wide variety of train-themed children's books.